Here it is. Last year's HSC question 16, so the last one, and it's part B. So you can see the 11 marks there on the right hand side. There's four parts to this question and we're going to kind of do it in, um, in three acts as it were. So take in the question, have a look. There is so much going on here um, that it's very tempting to look at this and say, don't know where to start. And I think that's what half the state did. They were like, forget it. Um, I'm just going to go and check some, I'm going to check if I made silly mistakes on any other part of the paper because it's just so intimidating to even begin, right? But I already mentioned it's clearly an integration question. Um, it's not just an integration question. If you have a look, even in part one, the subset of uh, further integration within extension two, the subset of further integration that we're looking at is a recurrence relation. Can you see it there in part one? You've got the integral i n and we want to express it as a version of or a, a sort of constant multiple of i n minus one, like a smaller version, a, a sort of stepped down version of the original integral, okay? So this is a recurrence relation. We can do these questions. We know how to handle them, even if it's been a while. So here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna begin, and I would suggest you either take your screenshot of the question on my screen now, or if you go to the front page um, of our class in Canvas, you can go, there's a, I've linked you straight to the 2020 paper. You can just scroll all the way down to question 16b. So there are your two choices. Um, once you've got either one of those visible, um, we're going to dive into the beginning of part one. I'm going to start you off and help give you some insight into my thinking. And then it's 7.42. Uh, and then I'm going to give you mm, three or four minutes to try and get all the way through part one. And then we'll start, we'll do the same for part two and, and so on. Okay. Let's see how we go. Part one, prove that I n equals 2 n on 2 n plus one times i n minus one. So this is what we're trying to work with. And I'm just gonna jot down that integral for starters. i n equals, um, we're going from naught to pi on two, and that will obviously be pretty important later on. And it's this weird, whoopsie daisy, this weird sign raised to this awkward looking power, two n plus one. And it's not even sign of a nice angle, it's sign of a double angle for some reason with respect to theta and uh, the particular values of n that have been specified, you can see right there, uh, n is greater than or equal to one. And it's also kind of implied we're in the integers here, um, not kind of implied, it's sort of mentioned up here, but because you're in a recurrence relation, right? You're like, well, I'm only dealing with the integers. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop that um, domain restriction right there. <clears throat> now, before you panic too hard, right? Just have a, have a look at the uh, first part one. Like, what are we trying to do? We're trying to form a recurrence relation that relates i n to i n minus one. Now you've seen before, most recurrence relations do this, but a handful of them, particularly the ones that have trigonometric functions in them, sometimes they skip a step. They, they go two steps down, they go to i n minus two. Um, and that's often because of the use of the uh, Pythagorean identity, right? Sine squared plus cos squared equals one. So sometimes the, the use of those squares steps you down through your algebra um, to i n minus two rather than i n minus one. But because there is an i n minus one there, right? What we need to think about is, well, what does i n minus one look like? And then how do we work toward it? How do we start to break apart the original integral to get on the road to where we want? So that's gonna be the first part of my nudge for you, okay? I'm gonna say, well, what is i n minus one? I don't need to know much about how to go through this question. I can get some runs on the board, some marks that will count for something, even just by saying what this is, okay? So let's begin by thinking about just how to substitute n minus one into here. I've still got my same old boundaries, naught to pi on two. They are independence of n, so they just stay put. Then I say sine of, and at this point, I, I see my first and only n. So I'm gonna substitute in n minus one right there, plus one. So you can see here, there's the n being substituted, or the n minus one rather, being substituted there, and you've got your plus one hanging on the end there of the power. What about the angle? Well, it's independent of n, so it's just gonna stay as to theta, and then you integrate with respect to theta, okay? Now, hopefully, it isn't too rough to see we can just uh, tease this out a teeny bit more by recognizing that's two and minus two. You add one, so that's gonna leave me with sine raised to two n minus one of two theta with respect to theta, okay? So we need to get some expression for i n that will have this in it because this is i n minus one. So the question we need to answer first to even really get on the road with part one is, 
where could that come from? Where could this thing, where could this sort of appear if we go through some kind of integration by parts process? Because that's usually how most recurrence relations are formed. Now I'm just gonna pause for a minute because I want you to, I want it to tick over in your brain. Before I give you those three or four minutes that I promised to work independently on this, I wonder if you're recognizing how this could arrive out of this original integral if you combine it with an integration by parts process. What could you do to this that would somehow lead you here? Now, there are sort of two possibilities, right? Um, you could think back to this um, Pythagorean identity that I mentioned before, sine squared plus cos squared equals one. Um, that's, that's a candidate, right? Um, however, one of the other things that you notice is that if you're gonna use that, we sort of mentioned this before, you'd expect the difference between these two to be two, right? But it's not, it's only a difference of one. So therefore, I want you to think, right, how are we gonna use this? You need to pull out a trick that we learned right at the beginning of integration by parts, which is that integration by parts isn't just for um, dealing with things that are very obviously sort of ex expressed as a product. Sometimes you've gotta deal with something that doesn't like obviously look like a product that you have to do the work to kind of make the product part of it and therefore the, the selection of your U and your, D your DV and that kind of thing a little more obvious, okay? So here is my final nudge before I say over to you. Um, if I think about this original IN, let's consider IN I'm going to rewrite it to make the product a little more obvious. I'm not going to tell you which are U and DV. I think you can work that part out yourself. But here's the way that I think is going to be most helpful for us to try and get to the result that they're requiring us to prove in part one, okay? I'm going to break apart the index. You can see there's the 2n and the plus 1 there. So in fact, even though maybe it's sort of like clouded from your view because it's so weird and complicated, this is a product in, in not too uncertain terms. So I'm going to break out one of the sine 2 thetas. One of them, just one. So if I take one of them out, because there are 2n plus 1 of them inside this, um, this long product, right? That will leave 2n of them sitting to the side if I've taken out one. So there's the one hanging out there and then I'm integrating with respect to theta, okay? I'm gonna hit pause now. You have uh, a product here that you can clearly break apart using integration by parts. I'm gonna give you, yeah, let's call it till 752 to have a go and see how far you can get through the integration by parts to get to the IN equals result that they are looking for. Um, good luck if you've got any questions. Um, I'm not gonna put you into breakouts just yet because I don't think we quite have the time, but um, you're welcome to um, post in the chat either if you're like, yes, I'm done, um, or two, I'm completely confused, or three, and you can do this privately, or in the chat to everyone, say like, oh, I, I, could you give me a nudge, can you give me a clue, okay? So, I'm gonna go myself on mute, good luck, and we'll come back together in a few minutes.